During the biggest armed conflict in human history, many countries in Europe and worldwide had fallen under foreign occupation. In Europe, you were either on the side of fascist Italy and Germany, or you were destroyed from the ground up and occupied, left to deal with your destiny, which was usually determined by the Nazi puppet that happened to control you. Yugoslavia sealed its destiny after the Yugoslav coup d'etat on the 27th of March. Two days prior to this though, in 1941, Prince Pavle Karadjordjevic allowed military access to the German forces and ultimately aligned the kingdom on the side of the Axis. This agreement was extremely unpopular within the country, especially among the Serbs and Montenegrins. The regency was overthrown two days later, which followed in the placement of 17-year-old King Petar on the throne. This new government had announced the previous decision to join the Axis, which had infuriated Hitler. It took him only a few hours to order a blitzkrieg action against Yugoslavia on the 6th of April 1941, utilizing the Luftwaffe with overwhelming fire over Belgrade and a land invasion from Western Bulgaria, Romania, Hungary and Austria. In an attempt to make most of the occupied zone and express the Nazi ideological hatred toward the Slavic peoples, parts of Yugoslavia were given to newly formed fascist governments using the already existing fascist movements and political parties in the area. This was the map of the Western Balkans following the April War. Hungary had annexed Bačka and Baranja regions in the northeast whereas Bulgaria occupied Macedonia and the province of Pirot. Germany annexed northern and eastern Slovenia, occupied the Serb Banat, and established a military occupation administration in Serbia proper, based in Belgrade. Atrocities committed by the Nazis against the Serbs include mass killings in Kraljevo and Kragujevac, where Nazi soldiers massacred middle school students and teachers. This event is in modern Serbian culture known as the Krvava Bajka, or the Bloody Fairy Tale, which was put under the spotlight by the extremely well-known poem by Desanka Maksimovic. Italy annexed southern and eastern Slovenia, occupied the Yugoslav coastline along the Adriatic Sea, and attached Kosovo and Metohija to Albania which Italy had annexed in April of 1939. Under the Albanian protectorate, 15,000 Serbs were killed and over 100,000 were exiled to mainland Serbia, which had resulted in waves of Albanian settlers in Kosovo. This helped the progress of the ethnic shift and modern dispute over Kosovo and Metohija we have. And then we come to the most infamous reign during the Nazi occupation of Yugoslavia. The Ustasha movement, under the leadership of Ante Pavelic and sponsored by the Italians and Germans, proclaimed the independent state of Croatia, which annexed the lands of what is today Bosnia and Herzegovina and Zemun in Serbia. It's important to mention though that not all Croatians are to be blamed for the brutalities and war crimes committed during the Ustasha movement. This video is not directed against modern Croatia and its only goal is to state facts and truths about the inhumane actions of the Ustasha during World War II, which are often ignored or disregarded. Despite the fact that Croats are Slavs themselves and therefore were considered by the Germans to be inferior, the German high command managed to use the active Nazi movement in Croatia to ethnically cleanse the Balkan Peninsula from all other unwanted people groups. The Croats labeled themselves with a pseudo-Gothic theory of origin with the goal of establishing some respect and recognition among the Germans as this would make them seem more sophisticated and related to their Aryan race. Left to make their own decisions and do whatever they want in the Balkans, the Ustasha Croats pursued an attempt of mass genocide against Orthodox Serbs, Jews and Roma as they were deemed as inferior and filthy, despite the fact that they all lived in the same kingdom for decades. Despite the obvious hatred towards all other Slavic peoples, 
The Ustasha Croats openly disclosed Muslim Bosniaks as allies and brothers. According to their theory that Bosniaks are just Muslim Croats who converted into Islam during the Ottoman period. Due to the sheer madness of the world war on all fronts, nobody could care less about what's happening in Yugoslavia. July 22nd, 1941 is known as the day when Ante Pavelic proclaimed his racial policy stating Serbs as national enemy number one and beginning the construction of the first concentration camps. The injustices, persecutions and atrocities committed by the Ustasha started getting opposition in the form of the monarchist Chetnik and socialist partisan movements, with Draža Mihailović and Josip Broz Tito as their leaders. These two also fought against each other as they stood for completely different values and were looking forward to establishing a new government after the war, either as a monarchy or as a socialist republic. As history beholds, after World War II, the Federal Socialist Republic of Yugoslavia was founded with Josip Broz Tito in charge. These paramilitary movements engaged in guerrilla warfare with the goal of overthrowing the oppressors and preventing mass killings of Serbs, Jews and Roma in Serbia and Bosnia. An extremely controversial figure in this context is Milan Nedic, who was the Prime Minister of the Nazi puppet state of the government of the National Salvation. His contributions to the protection of Serbs from Ustasha Croats and Nazi Germans are highly debated and filled with controversy as many think that he didn't do enough to protect the Serbian people from the atrocities which followed. The main enemies of the Ustasha were the Serbs, who were often imprisoned, sadistically tortured and killed in the most inhumane ways possible. A Gestapo report from this period showed a clear presence of disgust in the German officers regarding the deeds of the Ustasha. The atrocities were carried out in a bestial manner not only against men of conscript age, but especially against helpless old people, women and children. This anonymous report mentions 300,000 as the number of Serbs killed up to this date. The atrocities committed by the Ustasha had reached such a level that even German officers and commanders which witnessed them almost issued an ad hoc intervention by the German Wehrmacht in the area as the crimes committed were disgusting to German Nazis themselves. The report of Edmund Gleise von Hostenau to the German High Command shows that the reason that Germany didn't intervene is because they would look responsible for the crimes, therefore they left the authority with the Ustasha movement. On August 21st, 1941, Jasenovac, the biggest death camp ever to be built in Balkan soil, was put in function, and is often referred to as the Auschwitz of the Balkans due to its sheer size and reputation. Official historical estimates have stated that at least 300,000 Serbs, 32,000 Jews and around 40,000 Roma were killed in the most monstrous ways within the walls of the Yasenovac death camp. Now, many would argue that the number of Serbs killed was actually closer to 700,000. Despite all this, the modern Croatian government and politics still fail to recognize and admit the atrocities committed during the reign of the Ustasha and often disregard or just bluntly ignore the mention of Jasenovac and many state that Jasenovac was a hoax and that in reality it was just a labor camp and that nobody was killed. The international community idly stands by despite laying pressure on Germany to admit and deal with the consequences of their own past. With the end of the war, Ante Pavlic's racial policy of one-third of Serbs to be converted to Catholicism, one-third to be expelled and one-third to be killed had failed, whereas the attempted genocide against the Orthodox population had left wounds and scars among the Serbs, which had come to seek revenge in the wars following the breakup of the Second Yugoslavia. 
Following the end of the war, many of the Ustasha commanders and high officers fled to other countries, running away from their deeds. Ante Pavlovich fled to Argentina, where he was tracked down and injured by an assassination attempt by a Serbian, which followed in a slow and painful death, much like his influence had slowly disintegrated Balkan relations for years to come. The horrendous events which took place during the Nazi occupation of Yugoslavia are often overlooked and ignored, as the bigger picture of World War II takes the eyes of many towards different fronts. This video was an attempt to inform you about the Balkan theater in this period of worldwide inhumanity, and is not meant to represent Serbs as victims while overlooking crimes they have committed in later events. This is the traumatic reality of ethnic cleansing, genocide, bestial and dehumanizing murders which had taken place in the Balkan Peninsula, whether you deny it or not, and whether you like it or not. Thank you for watching.